surrealism because the key component of surrealism to me is automatism. The spontaneity is the crux of the matter. I mean, sometimes I'll have a, a dream and that'll inspire an image. Sometimes I'll see something. Sometimes I'll just start with lines and that'll, you know, evoke something itself. The Surrealist Group, founded in 1924 in Paris by poet André Breton, spawned an international movement which included Czechoslovakia, Great Britain, Sweden, Japan, and Latin America. In fact, maybe the first artist to have been exposed directly to surrealism is Alfred Pellon when he was living in Paris shortly before the war. And he came back in 1940 and organized an exhibition which was shown in Montreal and in Quebec, which has been extremely influential on a younger generation of artists, among themselves being the group of the Automatistes and, and, and Bourdieu. The Quebec group included not only Paul-Emile Bourdieu, but Jean-Paul Riopel and Ferdinand Leduc. Later on, other artists added more lyrical styles to the movement like Roland Giguere. Montreal artists Jean Benoit and Mimi Parent produced their fantastic worlds of erotic nightmare derived in part from the writings of the Marquis de Sade. Um, André Breton, uh, during the war, as many other European surrealists, um, got into New York in exile because of the war. And André Breton came to Quebec, in fact, in the Gaspé, where he has written one of his books, Arcane 17. Uh, he came to Montreal, he did not meet Bourdieu at the time, and I think he mentioned later on that he regretted uh, not having met Bourdieu at that time. And spent some time also in saint agathe du mont uh, Fernand Le Duc, who was a young automatist in the same group, was contacted by Bourdieu, and they were asked to become part of the group, but uh, they have refused, I think, for certain ideological reasons. Uh, they thought, in fact, that the European surrealists were still not spontaneous enough. They were not, in fact, automatist enough. <laughs> and here in Montreal, they were. They, were, they felt they were more advanced than the uh, European surrealists. Across Canada, other artists had been working with surreal imagery outside any formal group affiliation. Tony Urquhart produced personal statements combining lyricism with an element of something unexpected or disturbing, also a quality shared by Newfoundland's Gerald Squires, who makes disquieting visions of his rocky homeland. Starting out in the prairies, painter Kenneth Lockheed began as a visionary surrealist, but later became an abstract colorist. In British Columbia, the work of Jack Shadbolt had some affinities with the surrealist interest in organic transformation. Toronto also became a haven for immigrant artists from Europe, like Daniel Hanekand and Chile's Ludwig Zeller. But in fact, it is really in Vancouver, you know, which we see the the, the reception, it seems that the Vancouver landscape, the Vancouver geography attracted so many surrealists from Europe and it left there the spirit of surrealism. That when you go beyond the Rockies uh, to Vancouver, there is something that changes in mentality. As you are in the prairies, you have a mentality as the East um, uh, there is a particular mentality. That also uh, definitely exists uh, in, um, I I in the West Coast. Especially the coast of Vancouver is a very extreme environment. Uh, artists of the day of the 60s and 70s were exploring what was going on around them. They were seeing these extremes and I think that might be reflected in the work of uh, unusual landscapes, uh, bizarre situations, and, uh, and these vast extremes. A Canadian artist then, his name was Jock McDonald. He was painting automatically, and he did the first event of automatism in English Canada. But nobody knew about this until 1978. So why? Because Jock McDonald was doing this in hiding, because it was like a something wrong, you know, we don't do this in English Canada, we have to do the landscape, we have to be, we have to be good, we have to be, uh, we have to represent the Canadian soil and so forth. So at midnight he became a, a, a Mr. Hyde and during the day a Dr. Jekyll. Well I think in the 1960s, uh, well it's a time of the, obviously, uh, 
um, lots of changes on the scene, the social scene, the, uh, there is an interest in all kinds of questions. I think a revival of questions of esotericism. I think this is what triggered, uh, I think, the interest of, of a group of artists in, 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 on, on the West Coast. We could talk about the metaphysical landscape when we deal with English Canadian surrealism. The landscape keeps coming back and coming back. During the 1970s, the Move Gallery in Vancouver became the home of the newly created West Coast Surrealist Group. In the 1980s, poet and artist Michael Bullock and Slovak painter Ladislav Guderna formed the Melmoth Group, a successor to the West Coast Surrealists. The Surrealists have definitely brought the dream content back into the physical realm. 